So welcome to my talk, the talk uh, titled Beyond the Trend, How to Foster Diversity in Open Source. And before we get started, just want to know where are people from? Just um, say it out in the room. Where are people? Huh? Holland. Olive? Holland. Holland. Okay. Nice. That's, what, that's very close. Yeah? Cool. Cool. So a lot of Europeans. Are we anyone from uh, North America? USA, California. Cool. <laughs> cool. Well, welcome. I hope you will enjoy the, the next 40-ish minutes with me. Um, so before we get into what we're actually going to talk about, I just want to introduce myself real quick because um, I'm actually a first-time attendee and speaker at this conference, so you probably won't know who I am. Well, my name is Jessica. I'm in my 20s. I'm currently studying computer science, and I have started from a very early age with coding and getting into tech, both most in the open source world on GitHub through, as you all can probably guess, having issues and tickets and stuff like that. Um, then I started, I have a project called PyPandoc, which is a pretty popular Python library, which gave me the opportunity to be a part of the GitHub Accelerator program, which is a program that GitHub hosted in the spring to uh, find new ways to do open source more uh, sustainable, but on more on the financial side, so we could get some product based fully on on open source. Then in the summer of this year, actually, I just finished it. I had an internship, a software engineering internship at Uber, where I learned a lot about how they work, do their systems as well, and I also got to take a look at what they do. Um, open source because they use a lot of, of dependencies that some are proprietary and some are open source and that was great to see how a big tech company um, kind of integrated open source and worked with maintainers and stakeholders. Okay, so what we'll be covering today. Today we will take a look at what uh, DEI -E means diversity, equity, and inclusion. Probably we all have a vague idea of it, um, but we're going to try to dissect the terms and actually figure out what they mean individually and how they kind of play off of each other. And then we'll have a perspective from someone that is in, in the minority group, that's me, because I am fully blind, um, and I also um, uh, woman in tech, which is two groups that uh, disability and um, women are, have historically been more underrepresented in in the tech world. So at least from my, we're going to hear from like me about how it actually feels. Um, then we have a case story, and then we get into main takeaway. And then at the end, we can we have some actionable tips, both for smaller projects and for, for, for like for smaller open source um, projects and for bigger projects and foundations and corporations. At the end, we'll have some a very few tips on how to make equity simple. Uh, again, also very practical. And then we'll conclude, and there'll be time to ask questions at the end. So beyond the term diversity, equity, and inclusion. So if we just start from the top, diversity, it is an overview of the workforce. It describes who's represented in the workforce. It's if like if a company takes a, uh, have the service at the start where they ask what you identify as or your orientation or yeah, your gender, if you identify as being in a disabled group. Have any of you ever tried filling out one of those survey, surveys at the start of a new job? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they use that to get an idea of what, how their composition of their workforce is set up so they can know if the initiatives they take is working or not. 
equity um, is a um, is a policy that companies are starting adopting where they try to have fair treatment for all uh, individuals re regarding regardless of their sexuality orientation so on and so forth and of course it's mandated by law that's um, that's it's been mandated by law for a long time but the difference is that um, while equality as we many, many times heard uh, not to be confused with equity equality says that everyone should be equal but equity on the other hand says that everyone should be accommodated for so we can get the same result in the, in the sense that everyone should be able to to um, perform their work perform their work um, a good example of this can be um, we've heard especially in the US where there's a lot of unpaid internships um, or versus paid internships and that might not seem um, like a very big deal but we've actually but there's actually been studies figuring out that just making the internship paid is enough to support equity at a very early start in their career. And that's because the people that typically go for the unpaid internships typically already have, um, they already have enough, like they come from a well-endowed well background where they have the opportunity to work six months unpaid for a, um, a company where as people that come from a less fortunate background, they do not have the means to do such thing. And inclusion is, in, in one sense, the direct opposite of diversity, whereas diversity is seen from the employer's perspective, inclusivity is seen from the employee's perspective. So that's how the workforce experience their, um, their workplace. Great. And then we get to a, um, a perspective. And again, it's important to say I'm only speaking for myself and the experiences I've had talking to other people in my and other minority groups. Um, and as you can see, uh, there is three things I want to cover. It's being a diversity hire and imposter syndrome and a diverse leadership. And what does that mean? It means that you don't, everyone in at least most people I've talked to, including myself, has obviously had this thought of am I just a diversity hire? Are they just filling quotas? Or do they want me for my skill or just so they can say that they have a blind worker? Um, a blind software engineer as an example and that's where we have we, we in some sense need to trust the companies and we can see that in many different ways that you can trust the companies depending on how how public they are about um, hiring specific people that um, is from a diverse background or if they just um, see you as any other hire and of course it can also be that um, it can also be that you don't get any help from your leadership team it's a very big red flag if you have uh, if you get hired at a position and then they don't do anything to accommodate you as we talked about early, earlier that is a sign of bad, very bad equity. And then at last, that feeds into imposter syndrome and the thoughts that, you know, it can really be detrimental if, if people just hire you because you have a specific skin color or you have a disability or something else. So the main takeaway, if you remember anything from the talk, is the mindset that I feel like a lot of diverse groups have that is already summarized with everyone I personally have the pleasure of speaking to is that you don't want to join a group that wants you as just a member 
and that again goes back to filling quotas and just hiring you because you are from a diverse background and not actually also because you are fit for the position okay. so the story I would like to tell you about is Back in November of 2022, I got a message from a recruiter at Uber asking me if I wanted to come to a two-day conference at their offices in uh, Aarhus, Denmark, and I'm from Denmark myself, so that's really a no-brainer. And at, for at first I was hesitant of going because I, for one, don't have the means, and I'm also studying, so I, you know, it's it's getting out a lot of money to go somewhere, and you don't really know um, what it's what's about other than what they tell you, and it initially seemed very um, sketchy, to say the least. But then they told me that they paid for everyone to come there, like they paid for the transportation there and the stay there so we could have the chance to come and see their offices and talk to them. And that's where I actually started thinking, okay, maybe I should give it a try. So the conference is called C++. It's a two-day conference for women in tech that's just getting started to meet with diverse leadership in Uber and talk about how to get hired and how to negotiate and get to know a little about Uber. But, the, but most of the conference were actually more focused on how they could help us and not so much on they wanting us to join specifically. And one of the biggest, biggest reasons I could see that initially was obviously one, because of the energy. When you come from a diverse background, you get really great at spotting when people just want you for your labels and not for who you are. And the second was that there weren't a single um, journalist or a single cameraman or something in sight. They, they posted about it once, but on their LinkedIn or and other social channels, but other than that, it was not a, um, a show for them, so to speak. They really did it because they actually wanted to help us. So if we take, if we go that, go through that in the lens of DIE, or D, D, DIE, it's because they helped us with our resumes, they helped us um, test uh, negotiating strategies. For, for that ensemble, it was mostly salary. They paid for everything so we could all attend regardless of background or, yeah. And they weren't too sp focused on us joining them specifically. So, in that sense, they are diverse in the sense that they got a lot of different women. They got women, women of color, women with disabilities, and women without, and women from all walks of life. From that was twenty, that was thirty, that was forty. They had thought, thought of all that when they invited all of us equity in the sense that they paid for our stay so regardless of your uh, economical status you could attend and get an opportunity to at least improve your uh, resume or your your negotiation skills which could also be used both uh, in salary discussions and also in open source um, discussions when it comes to pull requests or issues or commits. And again, with the PR, it is that visibility into a project or a, um, a project's diversif uh, diversifying strategies are good, but if you hyper-focus on it, it just feels fake. And in that sense, it's because a lot of people at least in, in my diversity group, which is being blind, they talk to each other. 
So just a little visibility reaches far wider than it would normally because everyone, at least from um, all the blind people I've talked to, they know a good diverse company, so you can ask them, or they know a good diverse project where they feel welcome and accepted and like everyone else. And whereas if you hyper focus on being diverse and only wanting to be diverse because it's what you what people say you should then that people will be able to feel that and they will spread like wildfire so now with a maybe hopefully another perspective uh, we can get into the actual tips for smaller projects so the small things you can do is have inclusive language um, as an example these can just be simple things as if you're doing a video tutorial or writing documentation. It can be removing gender language or outdated term like blacklist, whitelist, and changing them with something um, less, less, um, less straight, like um, deny list or allow list, or. Yeah, something simple like having like master or slave written somewhere is probably better to do like wor worker and something else. And again, with uh, oh. and again, just write it, write your documentation. If you have if you have documentation that you have for your project, write it so everyone, regardless of skill level, can understand. That can be simple as. Um, having a glossary or explaining what a command should do or explain technical terms like, as an example, uh, DEI uh, would be a, could be considered a technical term, so just explain those or link to a glossary. Second is having open communication. That's very uh, very important for a project to have open communication, not just on pull requests or issues, but if it's a project where you want a community or have a community, make sure they have ways to openly discuss or describe feedback that they have for the project. And of course, include your non-technical uh, contributors and maintainers in that discussion and those decision-making processes. So you have a non-coding perspective on the actual project that you're managing. And probably the last thing for smaller projects at least is appreciate the non-code contributions you get because a lot of people, they write the code at least in smaller projects. I, I know that from my own experience, they write the code first and then they kind of do documentation later. Okay, so for bigger projects and corporations, the things that I said about smaller projects still apply. That is always good to have, um, as a, at least a starting point, a basis. So another good thing for bigger projects and corporations, especially if you have a governance structure that's more than just a few people, is have a diverse leadership team. So, um, so the, the leadership team mirrors the contributors you want to have on your project. That goes especially if it's a more a open source project instead of a corporations, because obviously that's chosen by hiring process. But more or less to the point is have the people in charge that you also want to be mirrored downstream your, your governance structure. Another thing, especially as I talked about before, is if you are hosting a event or if you have some other means of doing it, giving financial support to everyone so they have the equal opportunity of attending or putting effort into it or contributing to your project because that way you'll get people that might not come from a that great, uh, that fortunate background but are still very talented that otherwise would have to skip out. 
and of course a mentoring program where you, you can help people that are just getting started that's always a good idea regardless of uh, the labels attached especially but it, it becomes especially important when people from a diverse background might not have that many they can mirror themselves in in higher positions or that's further along in their career so it would be very good to have a mentoring mentoring program and last but not least reach out to organizations that help people in minority groups in tech like the lovely sponsors we have like uh, black women in tech women in t women coding and so on and so forth because i guarantee they have a massive talent pool of great great people and i've done that myself multiple times at least introduced myself and then very again the very practical steps to make equity simple this probably this applies to everyone, both smaller projects and bigger and corporations, is just ask. Get that conversation going. Because that's at least one way to very immediately see that you actually take it serious. That every that whoever you work for, the company that the person you're asking is working for, or at least the project takes this uh, diversity. Uh, serious and be prepared because they might not know either what they exactly need so just be open to experimenting figure out what works because what works for one person might not work for everyone but as long as we are as we are flexible we we can be sure to find a path forward to where we can all be play where we can all be t contributing to projects in our own unique way that makes these different projects so strong because at the end of the day it's a, co a collaborative effort that we all should take part of both minority and majority at the end of the day we just we're here to do a job to do open source either because we like it or because we get paid for it but at the end of the day just ask So in summary, um, don't have too much PR if you're doing events or projects about diversity because that can also reflect badly. It's okay to to advertise it, but don't do, like over like shine on it. Do it because you want to, and just ask because it's a collaborative effort and open to experimenting and of course it can be challenging but as long as we keep a good communication we are sure to to continue to be able to grow diversity equity and inclusion cool so see we have a little time for questions if anyone have any questions you just ask out in the room
Yeah. yeah. So, um, in that sense, quotas are sadly still required, um, in the sense that we still do not have that representation that we want, sadly. Um, in, quotas in itself is not necessarily mean intended or negatively intended. The difference become if you sit with a lot of resumes and you're looking and saying, okay, which one do I want to hire? Do I want to hire um, this, this person or do I want to hire this person because they're a woman? Would you, basically, a good test I figured out to do is if you remove the name and if they have pronouns on their resume, if you remove their pronouns and name and picture, would you still prefer to hire that person over someone else? That's uh, a very good tactic I've seen. Uh, I've heard of companies and seen company use is they are anonymizing resumes when they get an initial um, initial viewing. So they, the gender bias and um, people of color, like bias against that, like those unknown biases that we have like culturally gets taken out of the picture. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's what I mean by quotas. It's sadly still required because if not, some some companies will just sit idly by. But that's where um, reaching out to to organizations and groups that help minority groups such as women um, could be a very good starting point. Just to say, hey, we are open to do it, um, and just tell about the diversity. Uh, strategy that the company has in place such as again anonymizing resumes because just that alone can get get you very far knowing okay i'm not just getting hired because i'm a woman if i actually get a call back i know it's because of my skills cool any other questions You want me to share a story where they embraced my feedback or where they didn't embrace my feedback, sorry? Either one, I was going with embrace, but if you'd rather do the other one, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I have a story from uh, She++ actually where... Happy. <laughs> where uh, we had a feedback session at the end where they, of course, they asked us what we felt thought about it. It was an open forum. Everyone could uh, raise their hand and ask uh, the presenters. Uh, everyone that had flown in, the entire team. And I told them uh, essentially that it really felt like they they did it because they wanted to. The same, kind of the same things I've told today. And I got uh, the presenter, he's, they started crying because they, they really <laughs> wanted to send that message and it, it, they were really gra glad that it was received so well because everyone um, was agreeing with my statement so they were really happy that it, it was received that well. Um, on the other side, I luckily I wanna say, I don't have anything yet, but um, I definitely don't look forward to that day where I feel like I'm just um, a diversity hire. There's many times where I have applied for a job and got an initial interview, um, and then they have just not reached out again, or I've not gotten the job. Um, and again, that's where you start. If that happens too many times in a row, that's where you start to worry, are they not hiring me because of my blindness or because I'm a woman or something else or are they not hiring me because they legitimately had better candidates? I hope that's answer answered yeah, your question. Chris? Yes? Um, I'm a 
Yes. Anything else on the closing thoughts? No? Okay, well, thanks for coming everyone. I'm so happy that you all took part in my first ever conference talk in person. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for your time. And yeah, have a good rest of your evening. I hope to see you all at the reception later.